Just like having the right information is necessary to make solid hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Additional funding for The Spark provided by Christian Brothers University and Power and Tell. This month on The Spark, our theme is building character through sports. We'll learn more about an organization using golf as a catalyst for character and life skills building. A championship golf course giving back in big ways is the home of the PGA Tours FedEx St. Jude Classic and the largest interdenominational school-based Christian sports ministry in America. We'll also share a special moment from our Spark Awards 2015. Have you ever been excited by a new idea? inspired by watching someone lead by example? When we talk about creating change, we start by sharing the stories of everyday heroes who are making a difference in their own way so we can learn and do the same. This truth is the power behind this show, which is focused on business and community leaders that are leading by example to give back, fuel change, and create new opportunities for the Mid-South. I'm Jeremy Park, and this is The Spark. They're an organization using golf as a catalyst for life skills and character building. I'm here with the executive director for First Tee of Memphis, Nyrone Hawkins. And when you talk about First Tee of Memphis, very interesting legacy here in the Mid-South. So give us a little bit of the history and context for First Tee of Memphis. Well, it's, we're really excited. We're, we're celebrating our 25th year as the Mid-South Junior Golf. Uh, Charles Hudson started the Mid-South Junior Golf at Pine Hill Golf Course. 25 years ago this year, and we're also celebrating 15 years as the First Tee of Memphis. We have been officially been a chop chapter of the First Tee for the past 15 years, so we're blessed to celebrate 40 years worth of anniversaries in one year, so we're really excited about that. And you have a physical place, Firestone has kind of the connotation, but tell, talk about the course. Well, um, we're excited about Firestone. You know, we, we, we have some plans to continue to grow. But at Firestone now, we have a 25,000 square foot short game putting green. We have a 15,000 square foot sand bunker green. And we have a 450 yard driving range with nine target greens. So our kids can come in and actually practice, learn, and on the, tar and the target greens, they can actually play golf. And the goal is to really develop at least three holes for the rest of the 57 acres that we have at Firestone and 375 kids right now. The goal is 500. Talk about just numbers of kids and give us an idea of the programs. Well, um, you know, it, with everything, with 25 years, you have highs and lows. When I came in 97, we, we were at 87 kids. So to be at 375 kids is great. So we're looking to go to 500, and we're looking to go to 500 by branching out to other locations. Uh, we started something at Overton this year that went really well. We're looking at Fox Meadows, and we're looking at Whitehaven to be able to start doing programs programming with kids so they won't have to try to travel way to North Memphis so we you know what we like to say is we like to keep it in their neighborhood give them access and we, we don't turn anybody down money is not an issue not having clubs is an issue the only issue we have if you come to the facility you'll learn our core values and we'll teach you how to play the game of golf and I think that's the important part is the core values because it's golf yes that's the sports side of it but more importantly it really is the character and the life skills development that does carry over into success in the classroom and outside of the classroom talk about that dynamic well we've seen it two ways there's two different stories on two different spectrums uh, we had a young kid F. Sheer Essie uh, who went to Lausanne. He was going to be an excellent student. He was going to have options to go to school, but he had no social skills. He had no confidence. He was just a bookworm. And after being in the program for eight, for seven or eight years, you know, I'm sure a credit, credits the first tee with him getting that self-confidence to be able to walk and talk. And he, he he's now at Cornell University, uh, graduating this May from Cornell University. He received a $25,000 scholarship from the National First Tee, and he's getting $10,000 from us through the Lauren Roberts Scholarship. So that's somebody who was 
pretty much set academically that was going to go, but needed a little roughing, uh, cleaning around the edges as far as. But and then we have uh, a young, we have young people who had no skills whatsoever, never played golf, had no ambition to go to school. But guess what? When you put kids together from different backgrounds, from dis different socioeconomic situations, and they become friends and they learn how to play golf, as a scripture I read that iron sharpens iron. So when you put kids together, guess what? It's naturally they get competitive. They start saying, well, if you're doing good in school, I want to do you going to college and the conversation just get started. All the while, they're learning our nine core values and they think they're learning how to play golf. They're really learning our nine core values. Well, and go back to the college because it's about what you said, $9 million we're talking off, but uh, $9 million goes in terms of without use for scholarships. So there's a huge opportunity here for these kids, and especially kids that might or might not have that opportunity beforehand to step in through First Tee of Memphis, learn the skills of playing a lifelong sport of golf that's right. going to open up a lot of friendships and opportunities, but then carry that over into success into the classroom, into the college. And talk about some of the, the achievement score gains and the opportunities that do carry over into the classroom. Well, and that's, that's the important thing. If you, if you learn how to persevere, if you learn confidence, if you learn earnest, honesty and integrity, guess what? Those things bleed over to the classroom. Our national data says that 92% of our kids use our core values outside of the classroom. They mean they take them home. They not only take them home, but guess what? They teach them to their little kids. They teach them to pick kids, kids in the neighborhood. And what we like to think that we're developing the next generations of leaders in Memphis. Um, who would want our politicians to have honesty, integrity, perseverance, sportsmanship, and judgment? So those are our core values. Those are the things we hang our hat on. And if a kid develops into a great golfer, that's great. That's just a plus. But at the end of the day, we're trying to build good citizens and so not just good citizens from the African-American community. You know, our program is open to everyone um, inside of Shelby County. We have people who come from as far as uh, Arkansas who come to the program. So, you know, we like to think that we're one of the best kept secrets in Memphis. So uh, hopefully, you know, with the Spark Show, we won't be the best kept secret in Memphis going into 2017. Well, tell us how we can help. So obviously, those that are golfers that love the game of sport, mm -hmm. easy opportunity to volunteer. How else can we help? Uh, like you said, volunteer is always it. Uh, we just had the Lauren Roberts Fairway dinner. It was the seventh dinner. Great turnout is where we honor our kids with uh, several awards, player, Nike player of the year. Um, you can help by going on our website, looking at, looking at what we're doing, coming out to visit. It's nothing like me telling people there's a driving range in North Memphis, <laughs> but it's always different when people come out and say, there really is a driving range in North Memphis. So, you know, we, want, we tell people that there are different entry points to get involved with us, and you pick the entry point anywhere from being a volunteer coach, anywhere from coming up during the week, helping us with data entry anywhere we teach club building to our young kids and then uh, of course always you know we're nonprofit, so a, a monetary donation is always accepted we accept used golf clubs slightly worn shoes slightly worn shirts all of which if you make the donation it's a tax it's a tax deduction for you so you get an RS letter but more importantly we would like you to just get involved come out see what we're doing in North Memphis see the change that we're making in young people lives uh, we, we like to say that you know we are one Memphis so when you come to our programming on a Saturday you're gonna see African Americans you're gonna see Caucasians you're gonna see Asians you're gonna see you know you'll see a plethora of people and uh, there's low social economics all the way to high income people that live Live here in the city, but the great thing about it, we teach we're teaching young people how to cohabitate, get along, and to make changes, to do the things that we wish we could do as adults sometimes. So we try to set that solid fo footing and ground for them. So hopefully, it'll last uh, for a lifetime. Well, there you go. Make sure and check out the First Tee of Memphis. Greatly appreciate all you're doing here in our community and for coming on the show and sharing. Well, we're excited to be here. Thank you for having us out. They're the home of the PGA Tours FedEx St. Jude Classic right here in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm here with the head golf professional at TPC Southwind, Nick Kennecke. And for starters, give us an idea. TPC Southwind, obviously famous for the golf, the mm -hmm. big golf tournament here, but it's a lot more than that. So how do you describe TPC Southwind? Uh, I describe it as a PGA Tour experience for everyone that walks through the door. Um, we have swim, we have tennis. It's not just about the golf. Uh, it's about an overall club experience and, uh, you know, the, we try to improve on that, you know, for our members and guests every day as they walk in uh, into that door and give them a certain standard and experience that uh, they can remember. 
because it is a it's a membership driven organization. So mm -hmm. obviously you have this huge culminating tournament that everybody is invited to come out to. But overall, day in and day out, it's a membership driven club where you have opportunity to play golf, where the go, where the pros play. Um, you mentioned swimming and tennis. You also have a huge food and beverage. Um, describe the membership side and what that means to the club overall. Um, you know, they're the driving force of our club. They're how we define our success uh, based on their satisfaction, their overall support of the club. Um, and it, that's the way it is throughout the entire TPC network. You, know, you have the private side, uh, clubs like ourselves. You also have the resort side. You know, this week is the uh, uh, Waste Management Phoenix Open at TPC Scottsdale. So uh, by being part of the TPC network, you do have uh, multiple avenues that you could uh, experience uh, day in and day out. And so obviously on your end, the golf side, you have group clinics, you have private lessons. Talk about some of the opportunities for kids and adults to plug in and learn the sport of golf. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, one of the things we really try to uh, uh, reach out to people for is, you know, providing exp experiences for junior golfers, for beginner golfers, and for the advanced golfer looking to improve their game. To me, I mean, golf is a lifelong sport. So right. talk about the value of getting youth and adults into golf. Well, it kind of attracts the entire family. So by um, us building a nice solid program and having a really good foundation for junior golf, um, you know, maybe it'll help that wife or that husband who doesn't play golf uh, want to come out and utilize the club more. Um, you know, we have four day junior golf academies. We have three of them throughout the year here in 2016. Uh, and it basically, it's a wide range of uh, um, you know, for those junior golfers, whether it's ages five to, to 15 or 18. Uh, and we break them up and we work on skill sets, but um, we also try to incorporate first tee values during those junior golf academies as well and kind of just really build a solid foundation for. Uh, not only golf game, but life skills as well. I love it. So the philanthropy side, obviously that's a big part mm -hmm. of why we want to have you come on the show is FedEx St. Jude Classic. Yeah. That tournament itself is a huge exposure for Memphis and the Mid-South, but it also too, it gives back. It supports St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Throughout the year, you do a number of things where you'll go out and you'll play a hundred holes in one day mm -hmm. to raise money for different organizations. Talk about the philanthropy side of TPC Southwind. So it, it all starts down at headquarters at TPC Sawgrass and, uh, you know, the values that the PGA Tour and the PGA Tour properties have um, from that philanthropy side. So obviously with the FedEx St. Jude Classic uh, helping out St. Jude and the Children's Hospital uh, and all the money that we raised during that week, uh, the PGA Tour also has other um, programs that kind of raise money. And uh, Birdies you know, for the Brave is one of them. Birdies for the Brave is one of them. Uh, started by Phil and Amy Mickelson in 2005. Uh, a lot of properties have actually reached that $1 million um, mark as far as raising money for nice. Birdies for the Brave. Um, Southwinds is on Columbus Day this year in October, uh, so that's a great cause. Each head professional in the TPC network also does a first team marathon in which we play that 100 holes that you were talking about in one day, raising money for our local chapters. And yeah, That's uh, gonna be crazy, you're talking about just 100 holes in one day, so by the end, are you just exhausted? <laughs> you, you, are, you are exhausted, <laughs> it, it, it's a mental and a physical grind, but uh, it, it's a good opportunity for us to get out and play golf, activate the membership at our local facilities, whether it's someone holding the pin or bringing you out lunch during the course of the day, and it kind of ties the community in uh, as a whole. Well, I know that out at the FedEx St. Jude Classic, one of the culminating experiences is where you get to give a home away to a veteran. It's through Birdies for the Brave, mm -hmm. but you have a military, war support, military Warrior Support Foundation, and you bring out a veteran and his family, and you give them a key to a new mortgage-free home. And mm -hmm. so very, very philanthropic driven in terms of using golf as a catalyst, not only for the life skills building, but also to give back to those here in our community. And so when you look at the philanthropic side, when you look at everything on the giving side, when you look at going out and playing 100 holes in one day to be mm -hmm. able to make a difference, what puts a smile on your face to say, this is why we do what we do here at TPC Southwind? It, it gives you a purpose to show up to work every day. You know, I'm not just there to help people play golf or help people make their golf games better. I'm, I'm making the world a better place. You're making the community a better place and you're, you're, you're tying in this sense of purpose you know, to what you're doing day in and day out. Uh, and that's what's special about working for the, the PJ Tour and the TPC Network is that you have those opportunities because not many uh, golf facilities across the country uh, can say that they have this large philanthropic side that they can, um, you know, justify at the end of the day. So tell everybody where they can learn more about TPC Southwind and getting involved in golf. Yeah, absolutely. You can go to our website, southwind.tpc.com, which actually uh, it goes live um, at the beginning of February. 
Um, you know, feel free to go into our tabs for Birdies for the Brave, our instructional tabs, executive bios, our golf events for you know the upcoming weeks, and uh, as well as membership opportunities. And uh, Alex Satterfield is our new director of sales and marketing. Um, more than happy to take any inquiries that anyone has uh, across the community. Well, greatly appreciate all you're doing to give back, to make a difference, to help train our future golfers at TPC Southland. Thank you for coming on Absolutely. Thank you for having me. The Spark Awards annually recognize and celebrate individuals and organizations that have made outstanding contributions to the community. Our most recent Individual Collegiate Award winner, Greg Snook, is a young man who has served his country, become a student leader and advocate for veterans issues on campus, as well as a volunteer youth soccer coach. I went into the Marine Corps right after high school. I was 17 when I enrolled. Um, I went to boot camp in Paris Island. In 2010, I was deployed to Afghanistan. Uh, I was in Helmand Province in Afghanistan. And that's really one of the times where you learn a lot about yourself, you learn a lot about leadership, you learn a lot about life. Uh, so I got out of the Marine Corps in 2012 and then I started at the University of Memphis in 2013, in the spring semester. In the fall semester of that year, I got really involved with the Complete Professional Program after taking a business communications course with Dr. Toberville. Um, from there, I learned that it was more important to be involved with all the extracurricular activities than it was just to go to class and do your homework and be there for the test and everything. It was all about the extra stuff that you could do on top of it. So I became more and more involved in that and then eventually a leadership position for it came out the blue for me and I jumped at it. It was, it was a great opportunity for me. It was something that helped me to get other, other students, my peers, other student veterans involved and actually looking at ways to transition, ways to grow in a professional aspect to get him into the business world. And that was joining the advisory board, correct? Yes, that was. And then later on, I actually had the opportunity to go on to be the co-chair and then the chairman of it. I think one of the biggest things for veterans when they get out of the Marine Corps, they get out of any service in general, they go from having this, this sense of purpose for you, you're alive for the person next to you just as much as you are yourself. You know, and when you get out, a lot of that starts to fade away. There's a big push right now with the, the suicide awareness and the 22 for veterans. Um, but for me personally, it's more of a, a factor of you don't, it doesn't matter what's going on for you. If your brother, if your sister needs you, that's where you need to be. So the Veterans Program, the SVBA, the Student Veterans and Business Association, uh, this is really a program that we're trying to get involved in to help veterans transition into the professional world. You know, we go through some training when we get out, but in reality, you're not really paying attention to it because you're so focused on, I'm getting out, I need to find a job, it doesn't matter what kind of job, I just need a, some type of income. When you talk about the Complete Professional Program, it's academic success, obviously, and that's a mm -hmm. big part of your story. But it's the leadership components. It's all the, the employability skills, the soft skills. It's yeah. communication, conflict resolution, team building. It's, it's a very, very near and dear cause for me. Um, I was afforded a lot of opportunities when I got out through the University of Memphis, and I feel like it's my responsibility to really go back and look at what I can do for my brothers and sisters once they get out to help them into a situation where they're financially stable, where they're comfortable, where their home lives are stable. So it's, it's all about really giving back and finding that passion and accepting that responsibility to do for others what somebody else has done for you. They're the largest interdenominational school-based sports ministry in America. I'm here with the executive director for Fellowship of Christian Athletes here in Memphis, Kevin Nathaniel. And Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FCA, great legacy, not only here in the Mid-South, but around our nation. Give us a little bit of historical context for Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Well, Christian, Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been around since uh, 1954. 
uh, nationally in 1974 and lo locally. And like you said, it's the largest interdenominational sports-based ministry that we have here uh, in the United States. And we've even now ventured worldwide. And so our, our desire is to really make an impact wherever we are through the influence of coaches and athletes. And so school-based, that's a, a big part of this, is sure. going to where the students are. Absolutely. So describe a little bit of the programs and the philosophy, the four C's, if you will. Well, we do have four C's. That is the, the coaches, the camps, the campus, and the community. And so we go exactly what you said. We go to where they're at, go to where the coaches are at, go to where the students are at. And so what we do, we have a program that we say our character coach program. That's really one of our single biggest, largest programs that we have where we get volunteers involved. What we do with those volunteers is we equip them, we encourage them, and we empower them to be able to coach the coaches or to, to mentor those student athletes that are going through the challenging times and challenging experience that they have and build that character and really use the natural uh, tools and skills that you learn through sport to really shape them as, as young men and young women. And I think that's the real power of this is when you look at the character building, you're, you're equipping and you're empowering the coaches, which those are the mentors and the role models for the right. students, right. but you're also too, you're shaping those students to become future leaders. And so it, it transcends sports. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we have three things that we like to say. We want to seek them out, we want to shape them up, and we want to send them out. And so when you think about it, I always say that there's three things that bring people together. It's uh, sports, music, and food, right? And so you look at, at sports in general and the natural impact that sports can have. And you, if you were to think about, Jeremy, if you were to list just uh, the most influential people, how long would it take before you reached an athlete's name or a coach's name? And so what we want to do is use that natural platform of influence that they have, empower them to be able to shape them with some core values, uh, integrity, serving, teamwork, and excellence. And then we want to teach them how to use those skills to go out and make an impact in their own community and their own campus. And talk about the camps. Oh, the camps. We like to say it's a time of inspiration and perspiration. <laughs> and so what we do at the camps is they're going to get great training in their sport. Uh, like we have a lacrosse camp that takes place locally here. We also have uh, our, our team football camps that we do here. We also have a, a high school inner city baseball challenge that we do uh, during the week of spring break that happens here. And what we do is we give them great skill training in their sport, but then also we challenge them through character-based studies and whatnot on how to develop that, 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 those qualities that they need in order to make a positive and eternal impact where they are. So when you look at the numbers, give us some stats that stand out to you. I mean, obviously you're in just about every school. You've got relationships with every school here in Shelby County. Talk about just where you are today versus where you want to be. Well, if you think about it, there's over 130 schools when you it, include the charter schools and whatnot throughout Memphis and Shelby County. And so what we would like ideally is to find ways to be able to impact each one of those schools. Uh, one of the biggest challenges uh, for us is when we have coaches who want FCA a part of their program, but yet we don't have the volunteers in place. And so we have to tell those coaches, wait. And, and that word wait is one of the hardest words that we have to say to a coach. When you think about we have the opportunity to impact uh, young men and young women on those campuses, however, we don't have the volunteer resources in place to go out and do that. That's the biggest challenge for us right now. So obviously talk about volunteerism. What, when I say I want to be a volunteer, what does that mean? Well, if you want to be a volunteer with the FCA, we have various ways that you can get involved. One of them, like I said, is through that character coach program where you become a, a character coach for that team. That means building character within those young men and young women. And the great thing about it is we have pretty much a turnkey program on how to make that happen. We have a manual. We'll help you with the training. Uh, you get involved in order to equip, encourage, and empower those young men and young women to make an impact where they're at in their community. Another way is through mentoring. Uh, we're in the process of developing a, a high school leadership academy where we're actually going through a nomination and selection process where we'll pull uh, young men, young women from each one of those campuses. We will train them once a month and instill some of those leadership qualities and some of those personal development qualities. But in the process, in between those monthly meetings, we'll connect them with a mentor. So that's another way they can get involved so the mentor can help hold them accountable to ensure that they're uh, applying the knowledge that they're receiving throughout the academy. So what's one other way that we can help? Outside of the mentoring and the volunteering, what's one other way that we can help FCA? Oh, well, FCA is a nonprofit organization, so uh, we always welcome financial investments. But we believe really that we want your hand involved. Uh, if you get your hand involved, we believe that the heart will follow. The heart follows. We hopefully believe that the monetary investments will follow as well. And what makes you the most proud when you look at the impact you're having through Fellowship of Christian Athletes? What makes you the most proud? I think it's that key word that you just said, that we're making an impact. You know, there, there's two ways that you can do it. It's through making an impression where you, you maybe just go out and you just 
touch or you maybe just share a story or, or, or share a devotion or whatnot, but when you're talking about impact, you're talking about transformation. And that's what we want to be able to do. I believe that the only way that we're going to see sustainable change within this community, the 901 community, is when we have mentors get involved in order to make an impact in the lives of young men and young women. Well, I greatly appreciate the fact that you are focused on making an impact. Greatly appreciate all that Fellowship of Christian Athletes does here in the Mid-South. Appreciate you coming on the show. Jeremy, appreciate you. Playing in organized sports teaches children many important life lessons like teamwork, responsibility, respect, and perseverance. Sports help children build confidence and form friendships while shaping their work ethic and discipline to succeed. But it starts with access. And organizations like the First Tee of Memphis, which is providing an outlet for inner city youth to learn and enjoy the game of golf, regardless of their financial situation, are paving the way. The key to our success as a community is focusing on the life skills application to teach children how to face challenges in a constructive manner and work with others to live a healthy life. It means teaching youth how to be leaders on and off the field and empowering adults and coaches to serve, like we saw with Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Then it's leveraging our sports and sporting events to give back, like TPC Southwind does with their Birdies for the Brave and FedEx St. Jude Classic. When we build character through sports, we all win. So thank you for watching The Spark. To learn more about each of the guests and to share your stories of others leading by example, you can find us at WKNO.org and just click on the Spark link. We look forward to seeing you next month, and we hope that you'll join with us in creating a spark for the Mid-South. Just like having the right information is necessary to make solid hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believed in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark.